more goodies to unwrap for you guys. Let's unwrap it and see what we have here. Yes, a Soundstream MC245 amplifier. Let's step back to 1991, March of 1991 specifically. Under the new machines in Car Audio and Electronics Magazine, we have the MC245. It's a five-channel amp, four channels at 35 watts by four, and a single 100-watt subwoofer channel. In the next episode of April 1991, we can see in the directory, it's listed for $599 in 1991. That's equivalent to about $1,350 in 2023. As with all Soundstream amplifiers this time, all the connections were made on one end of the amplifier. Very clean. Everything was insert terminals and RCA jacks. No Molex plugs or wiring messes. Here you can see the 12-volt ground and remote connections. These accept up to 8-gauge. Then we have the mono subwoofer channel. Actually, there's two outputs there, even though it is a single subwoofer channel. We have channels one and two here. All these accept 12-gauge speaker wire. On the far end, we have the outputs for channels three and four, and also the RCA inputs for channels three and four. On the opposite side, we just have the model number, the name, and some other things silkscreened into the amplifier, including manufactured in the USA, Soundstream Car Audio, and also MC245 multiple channel 240 watt power amplifier. Gain controls for the sub channels one and two, three and four are accessed through the top of the amplifier's heat sink. Also the speaker terminals for subwoofer channels one and two and channels three and four are also accessible via the top. And on the far left are the power terminals for power ground and remote. These are all adjustable using a small slotted screwdriver. On the bottom of the amp, plastic plugs cover up the electronic crossover settings as well as mono stereo switches. We'll get to those later. Dimensions of the amp include 13.1 inches for the width, 7.8 inches for the depth, and 2.1 inches for the height. Ratings on the four channel side, 35 watts by four at four ohms, 45 by four at two ohms, or 90 times two bridged. The sub channel, 100 watts at four ohms, or 140 watts at two ohms. MC245 was available approximately from 1991 to 1993, and 94 it was replaced by the reference 405. Let's get the amp hooked up to the amplifier dyno so we can find out the power output in watts, the ohm load, and the voltage of the dyno. We'll also try to calculate the efficiency, which is difficult to do on a five channel amp. All right, let's do this. First up, we're gonna show the four channel section. We have it configured as shown here in this graph. Everything is set to full range. Four ohms, four channels. We're also gonna have the sub channel loaded during all the tests, so we should get accurate ratings here. Certified at four ohms, rated 35 watts. We get about 26 watts per channel at 13.38. We are a little shy of the 14.4 here, but I'll change that. We'll do a different test here in a minute. Uncertified, we get about 28 watts per channel. Again, a little bit shy. What about dynamically, one kilohertz pulse track? We get right at that 35 watts per channel that it's rated. Now let's crank up the voltage closer to the 14.4 where we think it's rated. It doesn't really say in the manual, but I'm pretty sure it's rated at 14.4. Certified test of 1% distortion. We get 31 watts times four, so not too far off. Now let's try two ohms in four channel rated 45 watts by four. Certified test first at one kilohertz, 37 and 39, so around 38 watts average times four. Again, we're about a volt under to the 14.4. We just wanted to run the mid 13s uh, for just kind of normal voltage. 43 watts or so per channel there. Uncertified to clipping. What about dynamic? It's got a little bit more juice here. 54 and 62. Averaging about 58 watts per channel at right at 13 and a half. Once again, let's crank up that voltage and try it closer to 14.4. See if we can get that 45 watts per channel. And yeah, we get it about 48 or 49 watts per channel at two ohms. Now let's bridge the amp into two channels, the four channel section. We're gonna slide those two sliders there, little switches on the bottom up to mono on both channels. Certified test at 1% distortion. And again, a little bit shy here, 79 and 83 watts per channel here. So uh, just a little bit, about 10 watts or so shy. Uncertified to clipping though, we're literally six watts away. But again, we're low 13s. So we're gonna try that again here in a minute with higher voltage. Now dynamically, even in the mid 13s, we're getting well over the rated power. You can see in the 120 watt range per channel. Now we crank up the voltage here, closer to the rating of 14.4. Can we get that 90 watts by two? 
And yes, we can. 91 and 92 at 14.22. Now we're going to try the sub channel. Make sure it's set to full range. We're going to use the internal audio input to route to the sub channel. It's rated 100 watts. Certified. Let's try it. 1% distortion. Using the 40 hertz track, we get 88 watts at 13.53. What about uncertified up to clipping? Again, we did use the 40 hertz track here instead of the one kilohertz track because we felt like it's a subwoofer. It should do low frequencies. 96 watts, so very close to the 100 watt rating. What about dynamically? Can we get that 100 watts? So close. Is it going to make it? Look at this. Right at 100 watts at 13 and a half volts. But we are going to crank that voltage up once again, closer to the 14.4. And as you can see here, we get the 100 watts. We get actually 103 at 14.43. Now two ohms, this amp is rated 140 watts on the sub channel. Again, we have all channels loaded. The other channels loaded at four ohms and we get 134 at 13.44. Just six watts shy of the rating. We call that a pass, but uncertified up to clipping. Let's see if we can beat 140. And yes, we do. 144, again, mid 13s. What about dynamic? Has this amp got some dynamic power? Not a whole lot here, but we are seeing above the rated power. 151, jumped up a little bit there. 154 at 13.46. But once again, cranking up the voltage. See what we get here closer to 14.4. 152 at 14.32. Here are all the results of the tests we just showed. Four ohms, two ohms at four channel, and also four ohms bridged. We also estimated efficiency, which is gonna be low 50s to around mid 40s. And on the sub channel, we tested eight, four, and two ohms. You only saw four and two in the video, but here's the eight ohm results as well. Now let's hook it up to some speakers and see how it sounds. All right, I'm gonna turn on this Soundstream app. We'll hear a little bit of turn on thump. Soundstream MC245. As shown here, only 150 watts and a six and a half inch Savard High Q subwoofer, and you've got some really good bass. Now we'll flip the amp over, take off these plastic plugs. We'll take off four screws. There's two on either end. And then we can lift the metal shroud off of the bottom of the amp so that we can see the internals. And here we go. This probably reminds you a lot of the MC500 I showed a few years ago. I will leave a link in the video description so you can rewatch that video. Typical sound stream at this time with the Nichicon capacitors. Also the transistors are squished between the board and the heat sink. In addition, we have 1,000 microfarad 50 volt uh, Nichicons here. We have 2,200 microfarad 50 volt and 2,200 microfarad 35 volt. There's the transformer. We also have a 30 amp fuse for the main power, which is not accessible unless you take the bottom plate off, unfortunately. But overall, the amp looks really good inside. It surely needs to be recapped. I believe these are original caps, so that would help the sound quality of the amp for sure. But I hope you guys enjoyed the Soundstream MC245. Make sure you check links in the video description for the other playlist 
of old school amps I've tested this week. And i got one more to come, so make sure you stay tuned. Till next time, Big D, I'm out.